Welcome to the Vulgar Display, a podcast live on location at the Old Rock House in St. Louis. Scott Dale yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. What it do? What up? <laughs> We're joined by a couple special guests with us right now. We have Maddie and Jackie. Hello. What's up? Jackie. Jackie. Well, either way is fine, yeah. but, you know. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. Jackie's the baby of the band, so I think we just when they joined, we I've had always to like, been, yeah, I've always been the baby. baby so, yeah, I've always been the baby. So Man, me too. From the Cal Cowboys. Yeah. Yes. Hit him with the. You guys can hear that? The applause. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, we got a soundboard. Well deserved. Yes, well yeah, deserved. We're, <laughs> yes. We're fancy, huh? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. When this tour got announced, the Vulgar Slayer podcast was as excited as you can get. Absolutely. I told oh. you guys before we went on air that we picked you guys as the number one record last year. Overall. And, and 156 Silence was like, yeah, they were like, four. yeah, they were right there with it. Hell yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Anyway, I'm, really, I'm really glad we're on tour with that band. Yeah. Seriously. They let us use all their gear, so I'm also really glad. <laughs> yeah, <we're laughs> very cool. Cool. Very cool. Yes. No, Makes our job easier. Yeah. That's That's great, great man. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, how's the tour going? Oh, it's been great so far. Like, just getting a tour with a band like Drugs and fucking Varials is like a huge honor for us. It's probably like the biggest scale tour we've done. Well, it maybe it's not biggest the, scale. It's definitely up there, though. This one's, We're playing some really nice venues on it. Yeah. This we get green rooms and shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's crazy. This is like all, like perfect size rooms. Like, right. not too, too big where it's like scary and whatever, but like big enough that we get taken care of and stuff. And yeah. I was listening to drugs like in high school and shit. So, like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now yeah. so, yeah. to be so, playing like, for them. Yes. Yeah, it's very like full circle and shit. It's awesome. I love the variety on this tour. Yes. Each band is so different and you, with a unique sound. Yeah, sure. But, like when I go to shows, that's what I want you know like i love definitely all metal i love yeah. death metal i love hardcore i love everything i love but, a mixed bill yeah yeah yeah. Okay. yeah that's why like i said when we seen the announcement we we're like fuck we're there we're already yeah. there we was already here yeah hell yeah awesome. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about the recording of celebrity therapist it was hard <laughs> it was hard um, yeah <laughs> for so our like recording process kind of it so far the last two albums we've done them at studios that are pretty close to home for right, us and right. they're also run by like very close friends of ours that like have been there basically since day like day one, one. Yeah. and um i don't know we don't typically do the thing where like like i feel like a lot of bands in this genre they will like fuck off to a studio that is in a different state and they will stay there for two weeks yeah. and knock out a record in that two weeks and like That's feel it. like they're fucking dead at the end of it but like both of our records easily die on mars took nearly six months to record to finish recording it just because we would like do bits and pieces go back edit go right. in for another session right. come back and then celebrity therapist we'd kind of it probably took four months yeah it not quite six months but four months take as long we we like we planned it out this time to like how we were going to do everything and we didn't just like cram it all into right you know tight, yeah. tight sessions and stuff and the vocals alone are their own process that like we did that over the course of what two or three weeks yeah we recorded those in a different studio too i think oh, yeah really? nice yeah so, yeah we have we did it between two studios uh cory batista who's done both of our records um did most of the instrumentals with him we did some of the instrumentals with this other studio called toast and jam studio nice. um also good friends of ours we've done a couple of like kind of similar to like the audio tree session thing toast and jam oh, yeah. does yeah. like their own kind of version of that and we've done a handful of sessions with them and stuff and um yeah so yeah. basically we we keep it between a bunch of friends and like it's nice because you have that connection with the friends so you like you all can see your same end result like i feel like yeah. that's the same vision of if you're working with someone you know yeah no the it was really special the like very last day of recording was the last day that um the original location for our friends toast and jam studio was going to be open it was like their last sessions like send off so yeah pretty and, much yeah. yeah yeah it was a little so it was really cool that we basically like went in there for the day and i think there's just like a couple of vocal things that had to like either get ad-libbed or like maybe right. corrected or something like that and then um at the end of the day and we invited like a bunch of other friends that were connected to the studio as well and like everybody else who helped on the record at the end of the day we all like sat and listened to the rough wow. mixes of everything yeah. and then like you know hung out in the studio yeah. and drank beer for fun the rest little, of the night fun yeah. little listening party yeah, it was awesome. yeah absolutely yeah listening party with everybody yeah. who like helped work on it and stuff yeah. like that so. all the homies were there yeah, yeah it's sure. really cool the process so far good yeah that's awesome just being comfortable in that environment i'm guessing it helps with the recording process oh yeah definitely 100 percent. than an engineer just sitting there like you know yeah, right like, you're oh, up yeah. now you're, you're up. Like, made yeah. friends with yet <laughs> we're there on the first day and they're like 
So, so what are we doing? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know yet. I can't. I can't. I don't know if it's too early to speak on the future recording plans, but we do have a different plan, at least in the works, and might change things up for the next record. Sure. So yeah. we'll yeah. see. But awesome. the. We're, we're really lucky that we, like, not only have cool people and cool resources that are just, like, really close to us. Absolutely. But, like, yeah, yeah. That, I don't know. We, we're on both records. It would be, like, if you recorded something one day, you could be, like, oh, I don't like that that much. Like, if you listen back to it, you could go back and make It's not like, oh, no, it's up. cut. You're yeah, done. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So like, I've heard yeah, horror stories take, about that yeah, all exactly. the time <laughs> yeah. where, like, bands will, like, drive 10 hours to go to a studio and then they come home and they're listening to the rough mixes and they're like, fuck, I did something wrong. Oh, man. That's you know? Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, you're yeah. shelling out another couple thousand dollars to go back. You got to yeah, go take off day. work. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, thankfully, we don't have to deal with have, that. So far, haven't had to, yeah, deal with stuff like that. I got a question. Sure. How do you guys stay so tight with so many different like tempo changes <laughs> just the yes. different dynamics and even instrumentation with the bands like this tonight's going to be our first time seeing you guys live but yeah. awesome. I've seen some YouTube videos and stuff how, how do you guys stay it, that tight with so many changes like it, it sounds like the obvious answer but honestly just like drilling fucking rehearsals like as much as possible yeah and like we probably did about a week of rehearsals day going in, into this out. tour yeah. well, mm -hmm. we would do it like I think we did every other day for like four or five days and then we did like two or three days in a row and did like a little production rehearsal like at an actual yep. venue before yeah. leaving for this but like I, it, it's kind of sheer willpower sometimes sometimes <laughs> like if because we've like edited our lineup a little bit um the lineup that we have now is probably gonna be sticking for a while but when we kind of changed our lineup a little bit last year like there's all sorts of stuff where like like we were using a new drummer and he, he would count things totally different or he would like do a fill that would be a little bit different and it would like totally change Roll the feel yeah. so like there's yeah. there's lots of songs that we would just have to like sit down and be like how do you think about this because just because right. you're doing it <laughs> we're correct gonna, yeah. it might not be correct in my head so right. like or like kind of the opposite sometimes like the way that I think about counting things Carson would be like don't tell that to the way don't tell yeah. that to the drummer or something like that because yeah. he'll, he'll probably count it to like right. totally different or something you know yeah um i don't know i think reps with that certain core yeah, yeah i think that's that's just the the one part we are probably pretty good at yeah. maybe yeah like you on know where each other is at that? yeah you know where each other's going on the count all the time yeah, yeah. like simply put we have we play tight because we have to yeah yeah because yeah. you, you wrote it so it's like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you, you have everything to. else off too right right you, exactly yeah. exactly small, yeah everybody has to be on the same page pretty right. much yeah it's a little complex yeah. And we talked about it off air before we went on air. You guys just came through a snowstorm, it sounds like. Sure did. We a drove <laughs> um we drove from Denver to Kansas City, I think, right? Yeah. And um the whole like first four or five hours was just like fucking you can't see shit out the windows, just like pure fucking white. The roads look icy as fuck. Terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. We've never had to like kind of like experience that weather like on that scale yeah. so yeah. it was definitely a little nerve-wracking but but we did it we're here yeah, yeah. yeah. and well, maddie maddie said that you guys are from, are from atlanta or from the south anyway. yeah, yeah. yeah. sort of foreign to you guys oh that much snow in atlanta is like like we uh, it's oh it's times yeah, yeah it's <laughs> apocalyptic <laughs> like you go to the grocery store and it's wiped out and people are fucking looting and rioting and yes. shit for, yeah. <laughs> like for snow that much it shuts everything down so like schools can't for like fucking two weeks yeah, right. yeah. for a light dusting we, yeah. stayed, we stayed in a hotel yeah, in wyoming sure. after our salt lake city show and like woke up the next morning and it was just like like i was gonna wow. lose my mind Blankets. like i just yeah. did not know what to do i've never seen that much snow and t-shirts like what is yeah. this yeah no, like exactly <laughs> yeah but uh, you guys actually played kansas city last night one of our yeah. we voted I think on this venue is one of our favorites at yeah. the Uptown Theater, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. That theater was honestly amazing. Yeah, like, cool, cool spot. It was a really Definitely. cool spot. Like, yeah. Very, very beautiful on the inside. It is. That's it's, right. it's like an old Roman like church, like how the pillars. Yeah, I really yeah. liked it. It's just, yeah, it's a, and they, they and had I this will, big ass marquee that they yeah. put their name on, and we were like, oh, really? yeah, That's exactly. So sick. Yeah, you got pictures of that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah totally. like, we <laughs> look, mom, I made it a little bit. Yeah. But, um, look at me, mom, I made it. Yeah, right. Also, the crowd there is awesome. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Crazy shit. Yeah. The shows I went to there was killer. Yeah. Definitely. They they go Kobe crazy there. there. Right? I saw Coheed there and then Ooh. I saw oh. the Horizon. Holy shit. Uh, Let Live. 
Yeah. Dang. God damn. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It was, it, each, each time I went up there, it's been worth the fucking drive. And I will say the venue sounded great and they didn't even have any stage monitors, like wedges and shit. Oh, yeah. We no, did we have to yeah. those stage monitors for some reason. But, but like, somehow, I mean, we somehow got it sounded it. good. Yeah. So yeah. I, can't, I, I, can't, I can't shit on it. Seems odd not to have that for a professional because they a get little shows, bit yeah, they, they get, get big, big yeah tours yeah. a little bit I don't I, I didn't really know why they may not just wanted to set them up for whatever reason or maybe we needed to request that yeah, I'm not know. totally sure it, but it turned out just fine though I have no matters, complaints yeah. three of our members use in ears and they're the only ones that yeah. need to be hearing stuff that much like the uh, rest of us just play off the drummer so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah Maddie can we talk tone a little bit. Oh, sure, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> How my question is, and I we so we actually have interviewed Carson, your singer, sure. six months ago on, on the phone, and I asked him this question. Then is like, how did you guys get such a thick tone on the record? Because it almost sounds analog in a way, which I don't know. Maybe some of it is, but it just sounds really thick. Um, I, we use Kempers for everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm honestly I like. <sighs> I, I know I know my way around amps and like gear and shit like that, but like lately and especially as we started to travel a little bit more, I don't give a shit about whether something's analog anymore or whether yeah. it's digital. And like I don't know, I used I used to have a very like old school mentality about it. And like truth, like my personal taste, I like things that are a little bit underproduced versus things that are a little bit overproduced. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can but over. um, typically for our records though, we so far have really liked to keep things pretty polished because. I feel like it just lets the chaos have a little bit more, like you can get away with it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Um, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, we, we use Kempfers and we model everything. And like Dan and I kind of, um, our other guitarist, Dan, him and I just like sit down and pick out the, like the little packs or whatever. Like, I think we have a Gojira pack on there. Yeah. Gojira. Yeah. uh, yeah, Oh, what was the other one? I'm not sure. And then also Corey uh, Batista, he's the one that put us on to the Kempers. He did our first record, Die on Mars with Kempers. Right. And um, he would make the tones in there and it's pretty slick because he can just like make the tones in there, copy them over, and then you can just put them on your Kemper and it yeah. sounds the same. I hope people aren't too mad about that. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I like, I tried so hard to be like, a gear bro or whatever yeah. and like <laughs> i kind of don't care about it yeah, right. like, especially because like I, I must have spent thousands of dollars on fucking pedals and right. i would just sell them every time i needed to pay rent or whatever yeah buy it back or whatever and then now it, like the kev- those kevin things is like 1500 bucks and it's it everything i could want you like yeah so Cadillac. yeah yeah <laughs> so i would say just from following you guys as twitter you guys are like infamous for covers We've, i guess you, so at this point yeah break out a surprise cover yeah here we did, we just we thought it'd be fun to cover my own summer one time and then everyone started talking about it we, like the video was crazy was you guys in like a library or something yeah we were in a library in um knoxville tennessee. knoxville knoxville tennessee our friend jay reed barker books out of knoxville tennessee and books yeah, he's like hyena. very cool diy in libraries apparently well yeah. everywhere it's like i think they book out of like a library and maybe like a, a restaurant or something and there's another spot in knoxville called the pilot light that like is like teeny tiny little, like little dive bar dive bar and that show was lit too like it's a place that is very surprising that there's like a scene that like really gives a shit for sure and but, it's awesome yeah is but that, is that sort of becoming like the callous cowboy way of like we'll play anywhere at any time just like oh we've always been like that i mean we've always like i don't know we were a diy band for like a really long time like we put out die on mars pretty much fully self-funded and right. released oh, you. yeah we had a label help with our vinyl but like we fronted everything and like yeah. promoted that and like sent all the emails ourselves and stuff and um i think just doing and like i used to book like our old diy tours and stuff like that and just doing stuff like that like we're used to doing right it's doing the shit like work. this yeah. is like <laughs> fancy Boring. like yeah. yeah this is like nice treatment and whatever like like, like to we keep, don't have to do nothing yeah exactly <laughs> um but yeah, like we're playing a house show on this tour, which will be really fun. And yeah. like, I, I, I honestly love playing like uncommon venues, you know, yeah. right. on a, yeah. on one of our tours, um, I think a couple of years ago now, we played at this, um, we played in this college campus town in uh, Toccoa, Georgia, which if anyone oh from God. Georgia knows, that is a fucking small ass town. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere, just like nestled in the mountains, like nowhere. Is, like, the only thing they got. That's it. And yeah. like we played in... Um, 
one of our friends garage is there i think and we played to like an entire crowd full of like i don't want to say sheltered but like very uncommon <laughs> crowds for us like it's a christian college yeah it's a christian yeah. college yeah. right and like playing <laughs> to like a bunch of college kids there and it was crazy yeah. it was fun they had fun i think yeah that's all that matters <laughs> yeah but end result yeah that, that was a that was a wild one <laughs> So, uh, I'm sure math, metal, math, rock, what, what are they even, math core? Oh, I guess. yeah, it's yeah, technically yeah, math core, yeah, yeah. if I you want to put a name on it. A lot with you guys' sound. For sure, for yeah. sure. It's like Dillinger and Every Time I Die. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what do you think about comparisons like that? Are they flattering? Do you get sick of hearing them? I think they're definitely flattering. Like, obviously, anyone could tell by listening to us that Dillinger was obviously a very heavy influence, like, especially in the early, on, like, Die on Mars and shit. Like, I, I think they're flattering, obviously, but I also feel like a lot of people miss some of the things that we reference in our music a little bit that because um, like we listen to like all sorts of stuff and yeah. like pull from like I, like the band. That's that, clear. That yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> well, the band that Carson and I had before was like an emo band and stuff. And um, some of the stuff that we like specifically got to do on this record feels like we got to like satisfy a lot of the things that we never got to do with like that old band and stuff. And um I don't know. I, of course, we love the math core. Like, math core community, too, is, like, amazing. And I don't think we would have... Absolutely. Like, yeah. Like, all the bands that, like, are coming out of there right now and stuff. And, like, the people that really, like, care about that genre. Like, they really give a shit yeah, about very, it. Yeah, very, very passionate about it. Yeah. Which and, I respect. That's awesome. And it's also so, like, just the nature of, like, math core is so, like... Uh, accepting of being experimental yeah. so you can do shit like you throw can get away a pop with being a freak your, yeah you can do like you can do all sorts of weird stuff and like yeah. everybody rocks with it and dillinger is such a huge part of that right because they oh, were yeah. Yeah, they're to explore. by far the biggest band in that yeah. like circle they they weren't afraid of like doing weird shit or yeah. like people and i will say like i love all that stuff like the heavier the better you know yeah. usually for me and the crazier and more chaotic the better but my favorite parts of specifically th- celebrity therapist is like star baby and title track like those are my favorites yeah the one that i gravitate to i like the heavy i like the wild and crazy and the chuggas and all that uh, but <laughs> the it's like the beautiful melodies and the saxophone you know and mm-hmm. all those yeah. kinds of things uh and, and i'm sure i'm not the only one i mean i'd hope not that's why we put that's why we put in there <laughs> you know? anybody like the soft shit in? yeah <laughs> This is Anthony, by the way. Hey, Hi, what's Anthony. up? Hey, hey job suck. I'm very excited to be here now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. It was, on, it was on your top, what, top five or something? Yeah. Celebrity Therapist? Yeah. Oh, so damn. We picked our tops. Oh, and okay. Combine them all for the vulgar, and like I said, Celebrity Therapist, number one. Overall. Oh. Woo! Woo! <laughs> We're live at the old rock house. Can't wait for tonight. Can't wait to finally see you guys. Killer stack lineup. Love the variety on this. 156 Silence, Varios, Drugs. We're happy to be here. Thanks for joining us today, guys. No, thank yeah, you for totally. having us. Thank you for having us. Seriously. This is awesome. We got a care package. Gave it to Carson up top. Oh, no way. We got a couple shirts Woo. and things for you guys. And oh, stickers. fuck yes. Hell thank yeah. you so much. Thank and you. If you have one more guest list for that milwaukee show our buddy michael would sure like to be at that milwaukee well, show. we might be able to pull some strings uh, let me, yeah, we'll let see what see. we can do my it's people will talk cramped. to your people <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thanks a lot for being here and thanks, yeah uh, thank you sweet thank you so much